Hello, in this video, I'm going to talk to you about the keys enum. So the keys enum specifies key codes and modifiers. It is marked as flaggable, but you can only flag three values effectively. That is shift control and alt. Um, it contains this uh, none value, two bit masks, about 250 non modifiers and five Mo uh, five modifiers, three of which are the ones that you can bitwise combine or flag. So here's the first bit mask, and you would use this to extract the modifiers from the um, the bit field, and these are in the higher order. And at the bottom, you'll find the other bit mask. This is the key code bit mask that is for extracting the non-modifiers from the low order. And key code is just another term for non-modifiers. It's rather confusing. And here are the modifiers that you can flag. So you got shift control and alt. And you can see by their enumeration that you can effectively flag them and that they are in the higher order of the bit field. See, so it goes from 254 to um, this number here which is uh, the 16th or 17th bit I think it's the 17th bit and there's another modifier that is in with the non modifiers we'll take a look at that so here they are um, Arwin and Elwin and um, I think they are the same key uh, internally if you were to have an, an, a numeric representation for them, but I'm not so sure. Either way, these are typically considered modifiers, but they are not in with the other modifiers. You cannot bitwise combine them. It's quite apparent because all of these non-modifiers uh, increment by one with an exception here and there. I believe this is how it was done so that you don't, or you, it makes it very difficult for you to create shortcuts or like hotkeys with the Windows key because it's used typically reserved for Windows stuff or just for Windows stuff. All right, so there's also some other stuff down here like the return and enter values have the same enumeration, they're both 13. Same with caps lock. So you got 20 here and 20 here. Sometimes numbers will skip a couple, like 25 to 27. Uh, we can actually search for the 26. I don't think it's going to be in there because they're all in order. Yep. So there is no 26 for sure. Very interesting. So I'm going to, I'm going to comment this out and we're going to take a look at the bit field. Alrighty, so I have a form here and when I press down a key shortcut, you can have the key shortcut as a normal string up here and at the bottom you have the bit field. So I have 16 bits here, a separator and 16 bits here. We have the low order and the high order. And uh, I'm sure somebody is going to comment and say that it could be either or. This could be one order and this can be the other order because of endian endianness or whatever. Pretty sure endianness j just refers to the order in which um, you would typically inter interpret it from memory. It has nothing to do with displaying it. It's always displayed like this. Low order on the right and on the left it's the high order. Alright, so this is how I'm converting keys to that bit string. So here is a convert method that I'm using to convert the keys thing to a base2 string. And then I'm inserting a bunch of zeros at the start until I get 32 zeros because I'm it's printed out as a number, whereas I want it to be a representation of a bit field. So I decided to fill in the zeros on the left. Also makes it easier to align the, uh, the strings. And here I'm just inserting a column 
at, in the middle so you can see the different orders. All right, and at the bottom, I'm printing out key data to the first label, just a normal string, and key data as a bit field to the second label. So with on key down and the other override, which is preview key down or something, um, you have key data, key code, and modifiers. So key data is basically um, everything, so modifiers plus non-modifiers, and key code is the non-modifiers. Modifiers is the modifiers, of course. So I'm going to put that back to what it was and we'll take a look at it. So I'm going to press the control F sequence here and you can see we've got F control. So here is when it says control and not key, it means it's the modifier. Whereas if it says key, then that is an actual value um, somewhere in the non modifiers or the lower order. All right. So here is control F. Control is the second bit in the um, the higher order, or what is it, the 17th or 18th bit? I think it's the 18th. And then you have Shift, it's the first one, so Shift, Alt, Alt is the third one. I can press them all together, and you're going to get them all set right here, so 111. So Alt is the third. For some reason I'm having a hard time engaging the um, the modifiers. Control is the second, shift is the first. Alright, and when you press a key, if when you press a modifier key by itself, the equivalent non-modifier will be put into the bit field. Which is it's really confusing. So when you press control by itself, you're gonna get the control key in the low order. Now remember the low order is for storing one of the non-modifiers whereas the high order is for those three flags. That is usually what confuses people because they try to bitwise combine the um, the non-modifiers. So alt its equivalent is actually called menu that can be kind of confusing as well and we got shift which is normal just says shift key. So there's the shift key there. You can see that it's actually like a an even number. I don't know if you would actually call that an even number in binary, but uh, basically if we were to count inwards, we would be able to easily find this in the keys um, enumeration. So there's one, two, four, eight, sixteen. So this should have the shift key value should have the number 16. So let's go take a look at, at it, see if we can find it. All right, there it is. There's the shift key. It's got 16 and it's just counting up like normal. Actually, it jumps from 13, but it's still not bitwise combinable because of the way they're numbered. And then the other shift key is down here that you see in the high order. Alrighty, and I don't think there's much else to say. Okay, definitely just um, turn the snipping tool on. What do I do with this thing? So, oh, that's... This is actually really laggy. I had no idea that the snipping tool was that laggy. I never really used it. So no matter how hard you try, you can't really combine non-modifiers. You can press a bunch of non-modifiers together, but it's just going to provide you with the last non-modifier that you press in the field. The other one is not going to be even attempted to be inserted into the bit field. And I believe the structuring of this enum, it goes into the underlying Windows system, like the low-level API, because you can pass this keys enum or a, a value or a bit field of the keys enum directly into a handful of p invokes because you can act, it's like a, a valid value. And um, I think they just did this with the 
easily used you know part of the p invoke so that you can only do simple you know key shortcuts that make sense i mean you can completely map the keyboard if you want to and uh fully do like crazy key bindings a lot of people do uh do keyboard mapping with games i know um because you can't be limited to stuff like this but uh, for the most part the abstractions that are provided to you with the appy seem to limit you to uh, three modifiers and one non-modifier for key shortcuts anyways that's it for this video i hope you learned something about keys see you next video